Narset does the minus six immediately. First chance we get, that's going to win us the game. And now whenever we deal uh, combat damage to the spell, or whenever we cast a spell, we deal combat damage. Let's take our attack phase first. Woo! That was such a good game. See the blockers. They're really wanting it. Any damage we get in here is good. Whoa! Hashtag removal in hand. <laughs> so they can block all that damage. Good on him. Good on him. Very nice. This has to be non-creature spell as well. Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to watch Hello Kid Game. We're back with another banging MTG Arena deck. Today playing Jessikai, which is the color combination of white, blue, and red. And we have a blend between mid-range and control revolving around Narset. We're incorporating both Narset of the Ancient Ways in the deck as the Planewalker, which has such good value. The minus uh, six, I believe, for the emblem to deal two damage to any target whenever you cast uh, instant or sorcery spell is absolutely ridiculous. She comes into the battlefield with four loyalties, so it's not, it's not hard to get, right? It's really, really cool, especially in a, a control slash mid-range deck where we both have the ability to remove our opponent's attackers and uh, block them as well. Moving on, we also have a little bit of extra spice within the Whirlwind of Thought, and this isn't Narset, but if you do pay attention to the art when we zoom into the deck here, you'll notice that it looks awfully a lot like her, and I'm pretty sure uh, it is. So this allows us to basically draw a card whenever we cast a spell, because you know 90% of the deck is non-creature based which is cool so you know if you're interested in the deck tech the entire list a to z how everything operates the strategies the synergies we're going to get into that in a second of course i do plead everybody to help support the channel with a thumbs up it takes two seconds like the video you know we put out banging content every single day and uh you know it's the least you could do huh <laughs> no i really appreciate the support you guys you can also uh subscribe to the channel for more content we do two new decks every single day uh normally always within mythic unless it's the very start of the season and even then it's just a couple days till we get there we have a 500,000 gem giveaway that you should get into. We've got free cash prize tournaments every month with Brawl and Artisan formats to support the beginner audience who doesn't have all of the rare and mythic wild cards to be uh, competing at the highest levels in those tournaments. So, you know, a really friendly beginner experience community within our Discord. We're also giving away one-on-one -on -one sessions with myself. I get a half an hour and $20 in gems as well. And that triggers every single 10,000 subscribers. And uh, we do give out 10 of those at a time. So a total of 100 uh, of those giving out. So, you know, help support the community. I'll help support you guys. And uh, again, if you're not interested in the deck breakdown, all of that, you still have to support the channel but you can grab the slider bar and jump right into the gameplay. And uh, if you do do that, you're lowering my average watch time, which hurts the video, but I do it for the likes. So if you do it, like the video, right? Please and thank you. Getting into the deck, we open it up with four copies of Opt. Now, this is basically a filler spell. However, it triggers our Narset ability, which we talked about, which can deal two damage to any target. It triggers our Whirlwind of Thought, which we talked about already. So it's going to draw us two cards. And it can also trigger our Shark Typhoon if we have it hardcast in play. So it could create a 1-1 Shark, draw us a card, and scribe one. So Opt within this deck has a very high synergy. Not only does it make things more consistent, more friendly, uh, helping you get to the cards that you need for the specific occasion, but it can also trigger a lot of value that you can stack on the board. Moving on, in similar aspect, we have Shock at instant speed, dealing two damage to any target. Not only can this remove an opponent's creature, but again, it can trigger a draw, it can trigger a shark. Very, very nice stuff. Blending low cost instant and sorceries with triggers based off of higher cost 
uh, CMC cards, which is really cool and exactly what we're looking to take advantage of within this deck. Into our two drops, we only have three copies of Shatter Skull Smashing. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of an oversight. We do have two drops also within Petty Theft and Bone Crusher Giant that we're going to talk about uh, in a second. The Smashing is at sorcery speed. For two, you'll never cast it for two. The minimum you'll pay is three and up. It does X damage divided as you choose among up to two creatures or planeswalkers. If X is six or more, it's going to deal double that damage instead. So, you know, really nice removal here on multiple targets, which is great. Again, the sorcery will trigger our Typhoon. It triggers the uh, Whirlwind. And, uh, you know, we can even use Narset's Plus to uh, gain mana to cast it, which is quite nice. And, of course, if we've already minus on the Emblem, it, like all of our other instants and sorceries in the deck, is going to trigger that and deal two damage to any target. So, you know, early game, it's a land, amazing. Later game, it's removal. If there's not even anything to remove it on, you know, hit one of your creatures, just don't kill it. If you can trigger the draws and the sharks, right? Moving on, we're talking about two drops. So let's mention Stomp, which is the instant speed adventure of Bone Crusher Giant for two mana. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. There's a couple cards that uh, really prey upon this or allow us to prey upon them with it, I guess. Pokranos Unchained is one of those combat damage is prevented. You just take counters off the creature. You can kind of get around that. Typically, those things are interrupting Death Touch, and we don't have any Death Touch in the deck, so you're not getting around it that much uh, because the damage will still interact. But, um, you know, other things, if you guys are unaware of, uh, maybe Nine Lives is... Uh, it's in standard, not played in standard, but uh, the combat damage wouldn't be prevented. So not only would the Nine Lives player take the combat damage for your entire turn, but they also get the plus one, plus one counters on the Nine Lives. So very, very cool stuff with the ability to stop uh, the prevention of damage, which is really cool. In our two drop position, we also have Brazen Borrower's Petty Theft at instant speed as the adventure to return target permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. You know, whether it be an enchantment, a creature, an artifact, at instant speed, it's very valuable. If an Ember Cleave comes down on the field, you can just bounce the creature it was equipped to. That's quite friendly. Uh, just general shenanigans like this. Of course, if you bounce tokens, they cease to exist and are not replayable because they don't go into the owner's hand. And into our three drops now, we've got the Brazen Borrower, which is a 3-1 with flash and flying. It can only block other creatures with flying. You know, we get to a point where we're looking to close out the match. I mentioned that this is a mid-range control deck, lol. Uh, so we're making lots of sharks in the deck. We're dealing lots of chip damage. We've got the giant, we've got the shock, we've got Narset's ability, we've got sharks to get in with damage as well, right? So it's uh, good to have flyers available, right? You can flash it in after a wipe. Maybe your opponent has Ugin. They see that you've got your Shark Typhoon in play for six. They need to minus that. Ugin minus sixes. Boom. You just flash in your Borrower and kill Ugin. So, you know, the Flash Flyer is really, really important to have. And, uh, yeah, moving on. Bone Crusher Giants, a 4-3. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell, it will deal two damage to that spell's controller. It's rare, but it happens. There's a good chance that your opponent would rather take two damage over four damage. They will typically remove it. To bounce it doesn't make sense because now you can stomp again. Um, so look out for the removal on your Bone Crusher Giant. But again, it's a great way to just soak it up and, uh, you know, drain your opponent's hand out. Because at the end of the day, we don't want too many creatures in play at the wrong time. So in this deck, I rely on Bone Crusher Giant just to kind of clog up the field. It's not going to win us games, but it can stop our opponent from attacking. Give us a few turns to get things like Shatter, the Sky, and Storm's Wrath online. Each of them cost four. The Shatter is two white. The Wrath is two red. Shatter at sorcery speed. Each opponent who controls a creature with power 4 or greater draws a card, then destroy all creatures. If your opponent has a creature with power 4 or greater, that is a downside. You're giving them a draw. If you do, like the Bone Crusher Giant, that's great because now you get a draw, plus you just cleared the whole field. We also have Storm's Wrath. Again, at sorcery speed, dealing 4 damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. Wiping the field, that's exactly what we want. Narset comes down to 4. She pluses to 5. She will survive. However... You do want to be getting her minus ability up potentially. So do take notes and only do it if the situation calls for it. Do everything else in your power first. Obviously, Shatter the Sky will not touch Narset, and that's very good. 
Speaking of Narset, here we have her. Legendary Planeswalker for loyalty when she enters. Plus one, gain two life. Add Jessikai Colors, which again, blue, red, or white, to cast a non-creature spell. That's the whole deck. Of course, we do have the Borrower and the Giant as creatures. But we've got the Adventures as the Sorceries and Instances to cast first, which is great. Minus two, draw a card. Then you may discard a card. When you discard a non-land card this way, Narset deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to target creature or Planeswalker. More creature removal. You can hit out a Planeswalker if you can. Plus you're cycling through your deck, which is good, but not nearly as good as you get an emblem with when you cast a non-creature spell. This emblem deals two damage to any target. That emblem does not go away, and you can smash it out easy peasy lemon squeezy we've got a whole deck of instances of sorceries that are basically control based anyway so it will not take long to get there whirlwind of thought is our main value engine in the deck an enchantment whenever you cast a non-creature spell draw a card this is a stackable enchantment oh my gosh that is powerful for four as long as it doesn't get removed you're going to have a very friendly time we don't have a negate in the deck. That could be an oversight. Maybe something we work into a version 2. You guys are going to have to let me know in the comments below if your opponent was dealing with your whirlwind of thought, right? Uh, obviously, it's not protected from a gem raiser, and negate doesn't fix that. But, uh, you know, was there interruption on it? What destroyed it? And how can we protect it? Because that is the idea of the deck. So we have really good luck today. You know, we blasted people with this card. There's so much value here. It's ridiculous. But if you guys happen to have trouble and you struggle... Let us know why, and maybe we can engineer around it and uh, give you guys some protection from it. Moving on, we've got four copies of Shark Typhoon, an enchantment for six, and whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost, which is ridiculous. Our whole deck will make it sharks, <laughs> will convert into sharks. We also can cycle the card itself for two plus X. Whenever you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying which is really, really nice. So it can be a flash blocker. It can come in on our opponent's end step after they Ugin on us as the shark, and then we attack and kill Ugin, which is going to be a lot of fun. So the Shark Typhoon has a ton of value here, and if we can, hard cast it. I know that is, you know, a micro brain move, but if your opponent doesn't have removal, you've got a Whirlwind in play, you've got a Shark Typhoon in play, and you play a couple turns with this deck, it's out of control. There's no way they'll ever catch up. It's to the point where they can Ugin and you have a full hand just to kill their Ugin immediately and just refold to the field and start the whole engine up again. It's really, really good. And uh, a lot of it is thanks to the Shark Typhoon. Whether it's cast as an enchantment, making us a field of sharks, boom, it gets Ugin and now it becomes an attacker through the cycling. So a lot of really cool possibilities within Shark Typhoon. Filling out our deck with three planes, five islands, three mountains, four River Glide and Lava Glide pathways, four Needle Verge and Pillar Verge pathways, and, uh, you know, of course, the Triumphs as well. Within the Raw Grand Triumph, we can pay three to cycle it. Uh, it just makes the mana super duper friendly. Of course, Narset's plus ability also makes the mana quite friendly. Uh, do not forget about this. As far as the strategies or synergies go, get to Whirlwind of Thought. That is your main priority. Once you get there, you know, cast on top of it. If you can afford to do so, hard cast a Shark Typhoon. Even if you wipe your own creatures with Shatter, with Storm's Wrath, and you have those enchantments in play, you will win the game. It's absolutely ridiculous how much value you can get through the Whirlwind of Thought and Shark Typhoon. Uh, combine those together, you're drawing, you're creating creatures, and you're dealing whatever your, your spell did. So it's very, very cool. We had uh, a good win rate today, a couple great wins and a loss, which was absolutely astronomical you guys are really going to enjoy it a very similar situation to the other video where we're getting beat by the deck that we produced the day before you guys are quick on the draw you're watching the videos making the decks and then beating me with them oh woof right appreciate the follow and uh you know <laughs> how on point you guys all are apparently we might have to start countering each deck the next day i don't know Thank you guys all for your time and attention. This has been an absolute magical journey this year through COVID. I hope I've been able to help somewhat. I know you have all helped me an immense amount. We're going to get into the gameplay footage, but if you've not done yet, like the video. Easy peasy, subscribe to the channel. Become a YouTube member to gain access to exclusive content, a VIP chat, brawl videos, historic content, limited content, whether it be seals or drafts, cubes, 
everything that doesn't convert regularly goes to the members exclusive club. So you get a lot of cool perks for supporting me financially. You can also do so by dropping your Twitch Prime on me every single month because it does not renew. And, uh, you know, if you want to go crazy, we've got a Patreon as well. But, uh, you know, that's only for the real ballers. Thank you guys all for your time and attention. Each and every one of you, whether you're brand new to the channel or have been supporting me from the big... Er yeah, whether you're brand new to the channel or have been supporting me from the beginning, uh, I'm incredibly grateful for you here today. Enjoy the video, and we will get back to you with our closing thoughts in a moment. And our opponent goes first. I can't say that I care for it, but if it's a creature deck, this is going to be a lot of fun. You mono red devil, you. Let's opt. Right, just set up our next turn if we can. The draw is not bad either. Oh, a haste attacker. Let's, I guess it doesn't really do anything. I absolutely love it. I will take that off the top. This is going to be delightful. They pick a land, which we don't really need. Let's just stomp the heck out of the robber. So he stops drawing from our library into exile for them to use. It's annoying and I hate it. Two chargers. Play more creatures. Stop it. Wow. Woof, woof, baby. We can stop two damage with the giant. He's gonna die, though, is the thing. We're still at 16. Like, let's just hold up Stomp. It is what it is. If there's a threat that's super scary, we remove it. But if not, we just go for it. Ending our turn. Sorry, I thought we already did. I was looking at this screen and it's kind of covered up. Uh, by my mic. Alright, Giants to the Dome. So hopefully they play that this turn. Oh, nice. We're gonna kill one just so it does less damage to us. Yikes. Let's start laying them in though. This is another. Oh, it's only one because it dies when the stack triggers. <laughs> yeah! I thought we were gonna take three damage there. Very nice. Yeah, fold into the field. Galt. Try and play. I think that's game. <laughs> We're about to hard cast the shark typhoon. Well, maybe not. There's no way they get a clean. Perfect. the third wrath. We can petty theft.
let's just uh, pace them out. Throw a little tempo spice in this. Oh, I guess not. Ouch. We've got a little shock of our own. Telepathic sharks engaged. That's the name of this deck. Fitting sleeve for it as well. I think we went all out on deck design. I guess we just hold on to that and try to... I'm glad we did. I'm glad we did! Telepathic sharks confirmed. It's a thing. It's a thing. That's a land. Let's keep the shock handy. I will opt right now. Shark plus a draw. Oh, absolutely amazing. Land can go. We're going to bounce. This guy take another draw. Stop it. Oh! You dirty, dirty dog. Let's take the hit. Ouch. That does not feel good. Don't concede, don't concede. Please don't concede. No! We wanted more telepathic sharks. Ah, I love it. It's too bad we don't go first. And I certainly hope we don't need a wipe. It's Yorion, so we shouldn't. If we can get these, uh, these cards in play, <laughs> we're gonna be a happy camper. Of course, we'll do our best. It's a little janky, but... At a certain point, you just pick a value train, punch your ticket, get on, and ride it. Let's see where you get left. In this case, our value train is the whirlwind of thought. Let's just wait and see. We need this, probably, uh, to be a planes, and one of these can be the second red source. So we're not doing anything with three mana. So we should definitely just throw in their, uh, cap, other than the one mana from the clock. Okay, that's nice, but there's probably no creatures here is what we're figuring, right? We can get these whirlwinds in play. So we want them to tap this turn. Spend that three mana. Let's take our attack first. No interruption. They have four mana available. Two of it gets spent. It could be a counter spell. I'm Hoping not. Woo! Get a little dance out. Do the whirlwind. Right? We should make a dance for each deck we do. Maybe that'll be our YouTube gimmick. This is getting countered. We know it gets countered. They've got five open mana.
We need our own shark city. We've got the telepathy in play. Now we need the sharks. Nice. That's not good. Double draw is really good. We're gonna find answers. Oh my gosh. Mind, body, and soul must be trained in harmony. Consider the future, then strike. I guess get rid of the giant. That's a hard decision. We can petty theft the next token. Draw two cards. At this point, we're looking for our own typhoon. Ooh! What do they take? They don't know our deck. They're going to take shark typhoon. It makes sense. That's the safe bet. Luke and the Spirit Dragon, we're not running it, baby! We're not running it! They are gonna look at the rest of our deck, though. Don't you dare take my shocks from me! <laughs> Tapped out here. Let's bounce the Typhoon. We could have bounced the Clock too, that would have been good. Narset dies. We pull a Shark off the top. This could save us. We have the draw engine to match that midnight clock. We're sitting on one, two available mana for a petty theft. Let me help you practice. Let's bounce the clock. Ouch! They cannot enjoy that. We don't need another whirlwind. If we could just start casting shark typhoons, we gotta watch out that they don't get land to their own Ugin, because obviously their thoughts on that. They're looking for it in our deck. <laughs> They're at six, they need eight, that's seven. I will miss Down you. 17. We're sitting on seven land. Potentially eight. 
We always will have mana to kill Ugin. It's like a last ditch effort. So Narset in play, take the big draw, make the shark. Deep breath, let's try not to throw this match. Still have lots of cards left to make it work. Your mind. There is let's more plus for the mana. You know what, if they have Ugin, whatever. Opt is nice, another shatter. If we can get an emblem out, I think that's what I want. I think we want to get an emblem out. So many options, it almost makes the game harder to play. Look at this hand. There goes our three discards. Fox is still relevant. And they now get into our hand. I imagine it's a, a shark typhoon they take. If they Ugin minus, we kill it. Shark means no Ugin. More sharks, more draw. Land can go. Disgusting. Two damage to the shark. Right, we're killing it without killing ours. My heart is just ripping. This is not like a tournament match or anything, but uh, this feels so high stakes. It's a decent hit. Lethal in uh, two turns. And we have a a little bit on the back end. Let's end our turn here. Tom takes the draw. Let's discard a land. At this point, let's discard that shatter. They can make a shark. We lose our graveyard. And these are in exile, not our graveyard, I believe, right? Yeah. So that's fine. Just making sure on those things. I kind of overlook those in this play lots. So, you know, it's okay to take a second, double check. And in this match, we definitely want to take all the seconds we can. Okay, they're drawing a card, which is fine. They went to three now, so they're going to gain life from that if we don't bounce it. More land in play that puts them at five.
Borrower in play. Bone Crusher Giant to the chops. We are at 23 cards to start our turn. Resolving this. Land in play. Narset does the minus six immediately. First chance we get, that's gonna win us the game. And now whenever we deal uh, combat damage with the spell, or whenever we cast the spell, we deal combat damage. Let's take our attack phase first. Woo! That was such a good game. Let's see the blockers. They're really wanting it. Any damage we get in here is good. Whoa! Hashtag removal in hand. <laughs> so they can block all that damage. Good on him. Good on him. Very nice. And this has to be non creature spell as well. Let's go to our smashing again for one. That's for three mana. We do two damage to them. We make a shark. And we get the shock. We have the opt already. They remember the emblem and we get the win. Oh my gosh. That was such a good match. I love it. So I think we go first here, lol, and I, I meant to say I think we need to mulligan it, and we go first. I am just whirling from that last match. This looks great. Keep six. Cost the smashing. Shock is at the ready. I don't know, you guys. Uh, just da. Uh, I think I used all my computing power in that last match. I am uh, fatigued. We can't opt if we're not removing with either of these spells. Deep press. We can do this. You guys get like that when there's like a. An intense match, do you get uh, anxious or nervous or worked up at all? This is the Jessica deck again. Let's use all of our available mana and then next turn's easy to just clean it up. They're not doing it this next turn, so we can play our giant now and just remove their uh, their stuff after. The only way we shock now is if they triple block. Is Transmogrify go on the stack target creature or is it as an additional cost to cast the spell sacrifice? 
No, it's sacrifice target creature. I'm sure of it. They don't have the land for it anyways. Let's try to find our land. They can never get tokens. Let's look for more land. That's good. That's good. Take our hit. Really? Maybe we should just clean it. Why wouldn't they just have blocked with three? Why'd they block with all four? Does that matter? Let's shock one, bounce one, play the other two. Hey! Kind of lurking through there, forming. Ah, uh, they keep getting more of them. It's annoying, and I hate it. There's nothing we can do. I'm doing this right now so we can try to find the land to play. Because we're not dropping a land right now yet. We want to land off the top. You don't get it. Alright! Are we looking down the Yadaro barrel or the Dream Trawler barrel? What do you guys think? Yadaro or Dream Trawler? Luca or Transmogrify? We got a couple different options, I guess. Right. Oh, just hard cast the trawler. We're straight out of left field. Wow. I did not expect that. I kind of did, but not that way. Okay. 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 You never block with your dream trawler. You never block with your dream trawler. You don't block with your dream trawler. Unless you hold in a gate. In this case, you can do it. We were even lucky enough to find a land. I don't think we have to pay life for it. Stop it! And we cannot find the correct land. We're gonna have to cycle for it again. Ah! Uh. We're looking for it right now. Cycling for three. I'm not proud of it. But at a certain point, you have to make your move. And uh, we're not making it without this plane. <gasps> nah, it's fine. It's like to play into it a little bit, of course, right? Let me lean out of the way. We do have a brazen borrower uh, in the wings here, ready to hit the field. And, um... Try to draw Shatter the Sky off the top. Uh, if anyone's unfamiliar with the deck and doesn't know what our playline is, we have a 9.09% .09 chance to draw it. 
No blocks. We can uh, next turn splash a borrower in. I guess. If there's no removal, which I bet there is. <laughs> we can hard cast uh, Typhoon if we get a land and it. We can uh, try to toss in our, uh, our Whirlwind and hope they don't have ECD as well. Oh, we get it. So we can do it. Ooh, three trawlers! We can tap one of them. Putting a stop out. Stacking the omen for the draw, whatever. You do you, bro. Two to the bottom. Good news for us. Tapping our turn. They untap. Aha, really funny. Oh, we should do it now. We should do it now. Actually, it doesn't matter. They're not drawing from that. Cancel. I was thinking... Something else. Ignore me, lol. <laughs> I have a really bad habit of acting super quick, so we're gonna bounce the token. We get the draw. We need to shatter the sky. Shatter the sky. Shatter the sky. Shatter the sky! Believe in the heart of the cards. Shatter the sky. It's a four cost, two white mana spell. They gain hexproof, but they're tapped, not attacking. We take the draw. Oh, that's not it! It can help us draw. So that fizzles, goes to the grave. A bummer. It goes the double block technique that we were thinking of. We're deciding to get the shatter to kill them both rather than double block and still have one more. Because we only have one more turn. If we pull the shatter, the shark's no good. So let's walk that damage now. I'm not impressed. Oh! And they rip all of our dreams away. Even if we get a shatter, they're pulling it back. We're one land shy casting Narset into the, uh, the whirlwind here. There could even be a counter spell. That freaking dream trawler, hey? Represent! So we're not bouncing them, which is unpleasant, so we may as well grab our draw now, in case it's a land, and then we can bone crush for another draw. Did we play a land yet? I don't know. We did not. So again, you know, dig, 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 dig. We need a shatter, and even then it won't save us, so we're gonna need two of them. We're trying our best. That's the very least we can do, right? If you guys are interested in this deck, I just showcased it on the channel. Check it out. It's two to three videos ago. It's got Dream Trawler on the thumbnail. 80% win rate. The best combo deck in Arena, and it's this Jezekai Transmogrify Dream Trawler beatdown. <laughs> it's so good. Whoa. So we need back-to-back -back shatters that don't get countered off the top. Sitting at a 10.26% on the first one. Going to back-to-back is ridiculously reduced to, I'm sure, below 1%. Uh, but hey! You gotta hope. And the first one could draw the second one. Right? We have uh, Whirlwind still in play. And here is Luca for the potential uh, minus two transmogrify. 
He can plus, negate, gets out of the way, mythos. This is our exact list. 100% this is our list, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, good game. I wish the one said nice deck. Right? You dog. You dirty dog. We get the draw here. Well, at least we know Toto76 is a fan of the channel. Oh, another land! I love it. I Honor the past love it. Its traditions into the future. Strike with a cunning mind. Whatever we kill, they pull. Technically, if we would survive, get our Shark Town out, you know, that would be fun. But, uh... Finding the Shark Typhoon came so far down in our deck. I guess we had a couple of them, actually. I shouldn't say that. Well. You know. You get beat by the best. It happens. I'm pretty sure this happened in our Golgari video, too. The video before this, which we recorded an hour before this, is the exact same thing. Undefeated, and then you play your last deck. So, someone mentioned that we need to be countering our last deck, and uh, you know, we absolutely do. So, our deck today should have run mass extinction event. Uh, you get absolutely blasted, but uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, facing off against your own creation sometimes. And we, we were close. We almost had him, but a couple tough breaks and triple trawlers. Woo! Whoa. I can't believe we're getting blasted by our own decks daily. This might be something that uh, we might have to address in the future. I like it, though. I'm not upset. That it warms my heart. It's, uh... It's cool. Like, um... I'll have to do a whole video on it one day, but the community as a whole in Magic the Gathering has been one of the most welcoming communities uh, I've ever been a part of that I've not had to pay for, you know, that membership, right? So uh, you guys are dope. Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Someone who's been here from the very start, someone whose very first video it is today. You're amazing. Thank you so much. I hope you have a magical day. I hope you enjoyed this deck and I hope you have really good luck with it if uh, you do decide to play it. Of course, my pure recommendation is to never spend a wild card in your life, farm gold through daily wins, and collect your set for free. But hey, that's just me. Of course, uh, you can spend $50 a day and then play four wins every day in open packs as well. Uh, it's up to you, but you should have a plan. And if you don't have a plan for Kaldheim yet, jump into my latest farming videos, right? We go through the numbers. You can enter literally how much time you have into a day uh, or for each day into a spreadsheet. If you bought this, if you didn't buy that, you know, if you mulligan your quests, if not, right? So we can estimate your farm time. So it becomes uh, more of uh, a possibility and enters your reality because, you know, to just think of like, how do I free to play farm this? It can be, you know, overwhelming and you don't get there, and you don't get there. But if you know that it's possible, you know the work required, and you do it, it's a, a much friendlier play experience. And you know, the game costs $212 to complete your rare set every set. This can be dropped down to $50 if you play four wins every day, and it can even be dropped down to $0 if you just uh, farm your gold like a boss and draft it away. So again, if you're interested in more of that, free to play farming videos, look it up on my channel. I've got well, lots of them. The most recent one will, will get you hooked up with all the spreadsheets. So again, thanks for your time and attention. If you found any value, smash like. I know that you've already done it, but just in case you haven't, hit it up, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you're notified of when we go live on YouTube. You can jump in to this chat that we've had going this whole time uh, and begin to engage with us. Uh, I always do love to talk. It's how I start and end my days. It's a lot of fun. And again, thank you all so much. Have a great day, and we'll see you in a few seconds in the next video.